Mighty on your throne You reign You ancient Zion's king Cry out Kadosh You are mighty On your throne You don't know how men become big They are men of the presence It's only men of the presence That are mighty in the kingdom Bishop Oedeko is a lion you see, we talk about revival and many things that God wants to do. The territories that we are still talking and making boast of in the north, it was men like Oedeko that conquered it. How many revivals is going on in Sokoto and Meduguri? Because the impact of his ministry was in, in Kaduna. These were the men that conquered those land because they were lion. Some years ago, he bought a land and the talks came saying nobody will enter the land. He said, if anybody steps into that land, he will be struck with irrecoverable madness. The next day by 10 a.m., three people were already mad. They ran away. They were they are lions. Men like WF Kumuye stood up and he screamed an alarm of holiness. And in his days, when he rained and shined like the sun. You couldn't even give a job to anybody. Those days they want to give job, they look for deeper lifers. You don't apply, they trust them. Because a man understood the systems of holiness. They are men of the mountain. You think things just happen? I sat on that Apostle room and he spoke. And then all my lost died. He didn't do a Bible study, he only gave a charge. How can a man deposit God in you so much? You came as a liar and suddenly you left. There's no discipline. Everything dies. They are men of the presence. Reverend, please walk towards a sick person and the cancer will go down. How is it possible? They are men of the presence. If Apostle Selma enters here now, he's a, mo he's a router. The man is a router. If he comes here now, there are many spiritual possibilities that will be happening on their own accord because Selma is around. You enter his meeting, things are happening even when he's not talking. They are men of the presence. It's not about the scriptures you know. People are joking, playing around with their lives. Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You are, you are ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. I made up my mind that even if it's five minutes of my clip you will hear, you will not sin again. Fire will engulf you. I, I will die to everything that is flesh. In my days it will be heard that men fear the Lord. You will hear you can't. Every demon that holds you down will run away. There will be hunger. Strange. You cannot explain it. Suddenly you will pray without ceasing. I don't know what you pursue. But me I want to be popular among the immortals. I want to be popular in the region of Zion. So that when I show up. I will walk in eternity like an immortal. I will not be a colossus on the earth. In eternity, they will call me a patriarch. Have dead and vain priorities. Men of the mountain. It's on the mountain that the will of God is apprehended. On the mountain. Hey. Hush. I wish I had time. God will not commit anything serious to your life until you can climb the holy mountains. Nothing serious can be committed to you. If you like, quote all the scriptures and talk big, motivate yourself. Motivational speaking cannot move you in this kingdom. In Luke chapter 9, verse 26 to 34, that was when the kingdom was handed over to Jesus. It was on the mountain. See, six days later, he carried Peter, James, and John, and they went there. As he prayed, the faction of his countenance was altered. They appeared before him, Moses and Elias, and they talked with him. What were they talking about? The death in Jerusalem. That was when the will of the Father was made known to him. That for you to fulfill the claims of divine justice, you must die. And where you will die is in Jerusalem. You will not die in Galilee. You will not die in Nazareth. It's in Jerusalem. And you will die the death of the cross. That was when the testament of the law and the testament of the prophet was handed over to the kingdom. Because he climbed the holy mountain. He stood there and he would not come down if it took 10 years. You run to prayer. But tell me, you think it's about time to so apprehend the mind of God. 
what will God have you do you follow people and think they will give definition to your destiny who told you men make men the mind of God why was Moses so strong this guy had body to deliver Egypt Israel he knew that Israel was supposed to be delivered this is the time but he didn't know how to go about it he went killing the Egyptian how many Egyptians will you kill in a lifetime and even if you kill all the Egyptian who told you God want them to live in Egypt the destination was not Egypt they brought him drove him until he went to the backside of the mountain the Bible said he came to Horeb the mountain of God that was where God showed up and began to give him the blueprint of his will for Israel the strategy was to challenge Pharaoh the empowerment was a rod in his hand and the mandate was to take them to the promised land there was no way he would have known it until he ascended the holy mountains some of you are aware of what god wants you to do you are saying yes i think god you will think all your life you can never stumble on the strategy until you come to the mountain and hear the voice of god because the voice comes with the empowerment and it comes with the mandate john said the one that sent me the same said unto me the one that sent me there is no missing word about it the same said unto me upon whoever the spirit descend and rest he is the messiah he knew his mandate was to identify the messiah the strategy was baptism so he was not baptizing because he learnt a new way he had it he had it he had it why because he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto israel he was there until the day so for him prayer is not an act you carry out and come back prayer is the life you are sentenced to until god leads you funny thing we do call christianity the will of the father it's on the mountains that the encounters of your destiny are many are trusting god to reveal things to them things are not revealed on land they are revealed in the spirit have any encounter in this life walking in the flesh everybody that had an encounter with god had it in the spirit even at the worst moment of their life this guy had mastered the way of the spirit until that was the only way they lived john was sentenced from civilization to die frustration nothing was working you know even talk about family they had none at this time everything they were dead to everything but even in partners to say i was in the spirit on the last day that was when he was carried to heaven to show him all the dimensions of heaven there were things shown to john that the, the angel told him don't or tight when the seven voices spoke that one by reason of privilege he's the only man that know it in all eternity the encounters of your life they are on the mountains of god you don't journey to the mountain for gate your life will be a puzzle a stream of try and error and you will end up an average person the greatest crisis of life is to know that you were born great but end up small every day you will weep that's why most people retire and they die after three days when they were young they knew they were going to rule the nation but they live for 65 years and upon retirement they ended up as custom officers they ended up without impact they knew the impact they were supposed to carry out they didn't carry it out so every day they sit outside their life is full of regret they see the things they should have done they never did because they did not choose the way of surrender they are living on campus you think life ends on campus having fun and going for clubs and parties you are a being of the of the flesh the bible said a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes precious people that their lives are supposed to be vessels to give expression to dimensions of god precious ladies that their wombs are supposed to be gates through which kingdom and miseries are raised they go to waste their lives for temporary pleasure because we are not taught the way of the mountain that's where the difference of humankind lies the encounters of your destiny are on the mountain and life is a product of encounters the encounters you have are what will change you but if you don't know the way of the mountain you will never have encounters you will live by the stories men tell you a preacher comes to them because you gave a very sound charge he calls you and say you're an apostle <laughs> hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne 
Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You were seated on the throne. The empowerment for your destiny is on the mountain of God. Moses went to the mountain and the rod he carried became the rod of God. Something came upon the rod. Some of you, what will make you is your mind, but your mind needs to be energized on the mountain. Some of you, what will make you is your tongue. Your tongue needs to be energized on the mountain. Some of you, what will make you is your skill. You need to be energized on the mountain. The mountain is where men are empowered for destiny. Even in the negative supernatural, they know. The guy who has the business next shop is not the pure water that makes him a millionaire. He knows the spirit that breathes upon it. It's only Christians that think life is a function of chance. So they are doing trial and error every day. You are a funny creature. The people of the world will defeat you in everything you do because you don't know your advantage. The guy knows his advantage is in Newi. And every December he must go to Newi with the requisite sacrifice. You, you are there talking. Say, God, we show mercy. Ah, God, love me. I am the child of God. The mountains. The mountains. The cities that swallows people's destinies, they are conquered with the resources from the mountain. I, I did a teaching on technology of spirit civilization. I wish I had time to share some things with you. See, the city you live in have the ability to rob you of your destiny. Many people in the east today, they have the love of money. Not because they were born that way. The day the city was built, that intelligence was wired into the foundation. So even if you come to church, it will not help until you find the presence. The children of Israel were being carried to the land flowing with milk and honey. They saw the pillar of cloud every day and the pillar of fire. They were walking with a mobile miracle, but it didn't change their lives. They wanted to go to Egypt and eat garlic and cucumber. Because cities have the ability of brainwashing you and making you a slave forever. Even if you see miracles every day, it will not change anything. Do you know what it means? When three million people are walking and a cloud from heaven is moving ahead of them. And at night, that cloud becomes fire for 40 years. It didn't change their minds. Because Egypt had educated them. It's a technology called the technology of speedy cities. It enslaves men. But the cure is what you receive from the mountain. There's a city in the spirit called Egypt. Egypt will keep you in the world forever. Egypt will never allow you go. Because in Egypt there is Pharaoh. It is Pharaoh that makes your talent useless. It is Pharaoh that makes a king a servant. And you will slave with your talent. Nobody will know you are there. It's a system called Egypt. Egypt will keep you a perpetual sinner forever. You can't move. If you want to move, the gods of Egypt will fight you. You make resolutions every year. I want to serve the Lord. If Egypt is not dealt with, you can't. It's a system that keeps people in the world. But the cure to Egypt is the rod and the blood. The rod is the word of God. And the blood is the perfect atoning sacrifice of Jesus. That's what delivers men from Egypt. And all of these things are in the presence the rod of Moses is in the ark. And the blood is what you pour on the ark. When you come to the presence, you have access to the rod and the blood. It begins to speak for you. So that the powers of Egypt can't fight you anymore. That's why in 1 John 1, 9, it says if we walk in the light, as it is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. If you are in the presence, the blood of Jesus walks. He walks. And Pharaoh will let you go on his own. You don't know why most of you live in sin. You try. You can, it, it's not trying. You don't try. When you come to spirit, you don't try. You either yield or you rebel. And your safety depends on the one you yield to. Because if you're superior in rank, then you are safe. If you, <laughs> if you yield to Satan, you will perpetually born in hell. Because God is superior in rank. But if you yield to God, Satan is in trouble. Egypt, you think you are going, then Jericho stands before you. Jericho is a city that does not allow anything to come out or going. It blocks your way from destiny. 
You don't know why you are born again, but you can't get married. Ha. There are four of you in your house. One is 38. One is 35. One is 33. One is 31. All of you are queens. Nobody is asking for your hand in marriage. Even the, the boys that you bought phone for, when they collected the phone, they ran away. You have a degree. You have done your master's. You have done PhD. No job. They work okay, it's okay. You just humble yourself and do a small job. You go, they say you have a qualified. It's Jericho. If you deal with Jericho, even if you carry pure water, you'll be a millionaire. It's a city. And what deals with the city is the trumpet of the priest. The trumpet. The Holy Ghost tells you what to do. And when you blast it, the city sinks. The trumpet in our dispensation is the prophecy. And the Bible said the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The Holy Ghost puts that word in your mouth and you utter it. I tell you things I have experience of. My sisters, three of them, 34 years, 32 years, two of them, not married. Until God told me you are a priest. And he said, go and blow your trumpet. I went to them, I said, you are hereby dismissed from this house. Get married. In six months, three of them got married. They are living with their children now. It's a city. But if you don't know how to stand on the mountain, you will be buried in that city. Buried. The way most of them were buried in the wilderness. You will be buried. And then even when you enter into the promised land, Babylon can come and carry you like this and take you out. There are cities. <laughs> Babylon Babylon does not prevent you from entering the promised land he allows you to enter first when you settle down and say now I'm blessed then he will come and carry you back to slavery and bondage what deals with Babylon is consecration prayer and fasting because to deal with Babylon Babylon is governed by principalities to deal with Babylon you need to interact with angels because only princes can fight princes. That's when archangels are mobilized on your account. But for that thing to happen in the spirit, you must be on the altar perpetually. Daniel and his friends, they say they will not be defied by the king's meat. It's not enough that you are excellent. Too. The Bible said they were ten times better than their peers, but they were still in what? Babylon. You can graduate with first class, but there's no prosperity. You are in Babylon. but by consecration and yieldedness to God in prayer and fasting then the spirit realm the powers of the spirit realm begins to move in your favor that's when the force of Babylon breaks they can even make you a king in Babylon first class then you become first class you become the president of all the unemployed and the government is giving you people stipend 10 10,000 because you are first class and you are intelligent you will be the one speaking on their behalf <laughs> Babylon the cure to the affliction of humankind is the presence of Jesus. Some think it's prayer. It's not prayer. Some think it's fasting. It's not fasting. It's the presence of Jesus. So if prayer doesn't take you to the presence, it's a waste. Fasting doesn't take you to the presence, it's a waste. When you know this, your pride about spirituality will die. You will learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. That's why every morning we come and ask for help. Have you not noticed that most prayer warriors are gallant failures? You take pride in the things you do. No. Latch onto the Holy Ghost and let not go of the Holy Spirit until He does something to your life. That's when your secret sins can fall. The crisis of your life can fall. And if you don't know the way of the presence, many lives and destinies that are tied to you will be maligned. Because in this world, we have space, we have place. The place God has given you, anybody who is within the perimeter of that place, his destiny is tied to you. That was why when Balaam fell, he became the way of Balaam. Many prophets now fall to the same iniquity of lust over money or lust over women. Is the way of Balaam. He said to Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, 
satan desires to have you to sift you like with he said but i have prayed for you that your faith faileth not when thou art recovered strengthen thy brethren why because when peter becomes weak the brethren becomes weak they are within the ambience and perimeter of his place some of you you are the deliverer of your family but the more you continue in your iniquities and disalignment with the holy spirit the more your family will remain in bondage you are running and inviting prophets from far and wide god is waiting for you to rise i told them in the benedium i said deliverance is not a function of the intervention of god it's a function of the rise of priests because god has paid the price kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne you reign you reign zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne see my time is up but you can rise now and pray ask the lord to help you you ancient zion's king cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth thou fountains of the deep cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne You want to make up your mind this morning and say lord i choose the way of surrender come forward let me pray with you quickly i'm not going to minister in the spirit because the next minister is here there's no point causing a disarray you just want to make up your mind you've been a christian but you say i want to surrender completely to your will to your government just place your hand on your chest you don't need to come forward let's not Let's not disalign or distort the place. And make that commitment to Jesus. Make that commitment now. Make that commitment. You are mighty on your throne. commitment this morning and you are genuine about it just lift your hands and ask the lord to touch you tell him you want an experience yes you know a lot of doctrine you have name among men you have titles but perhaps you are not popular among the immortals you want an experiential walk with god you have struggled for too long now you need the help of the holy ghost Tell him to minister to you now. 
Let Jesus reign in your life. Ah, God, you reign. Yes, you reign. Jesus, you reign. Yes, you reign. Ah, God, you reign. Yes, you reign. is a time to make decisions for Jesus. You can stop praying now. You can stop praying now. Just place your hand on your chest. I want to ask the Holy Ghost to minister to you. some people. Some of you, the Holy Ghost will just reveal things to you. Some of you, the Holy Ghost, you may just feel him tangibly. I don't want us to push so much this morning. It's more of a teaching series. Precious Holy Spirit. Stop playing now. Stop praying. Only the keyboard is enough for me. Just play the keyboard very low. Just focus on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we bring too much religion into these things. Holy Spirit. Look upon our hearts. And as many as are making this decision for you this morning. Stretch your hands and touch them. Anoint them. Quicken them, inspire them, strengthen them. Right now, Holy Spirit, just breathe upon us like a gentle wind to help us to stand. Faithful Father, just focus on the Holy Ghost. God is going to be helping your decision to be eternal, putting strength on you. Holy Spirit This is the time Touch now Like a gentle wind Like a gentle wind Like a very gentle wind Minister to their hearts Lord Minister to their hearts Just minister to their hearts Lord They are yielded vessels Some of you are called Some of you have been receiving instructions But the ability to obey is not there this is the time. Just, just, just quietly, just quietly. You don't need to struggle. Just open to the Holy Spirit and allow Him. And allow Him. I don't want to push it. I want it to be an exper- experience, an experience of God, an experience of God. Some of you, He'll be prompting you to make decisions, decisions. It's a hard business this morning. Decisions you've not made before. Decisions you've been struggling with. Just calm where you are. They make those decisions to God now. Decisions. To be a vessel in his hands. Perpetually. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now the Lord is going to be empowering, bringing empowerment to some of you. Some of you, your heart will become heavy. Some of you-